Yeah, no problem. Uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, so we actually have a few um, angles that could line up with it. I don't see it, it, it like uh, what you mentioned, ABC, I just saw that today, I never thought about that. Um, it would be possible to um, do the ACM, right? And then um, afterwards, well, this definitely uh, suppressed the stock and shorts love to keep it down here, right? We they Basically, you could argue that they've set the whole thing up if they're not shields, if they're not assholes, the, the sport, right? Um, <clears throat> then it's favorable to get the share price low. Um, so you could acquire... <laughs> And, and the shorts are going to help you. Like, acquire if you need to acquire 80%, that's a crazy amount of shares. But if but shorts man, are going to so try to yeah. keep it, if, if you what they really want to do, they've tried every week to strangle uh, uh, whatever average price uh, right. I've been calculating on. They need it for, you know, the equity proceeds they need each week from the JPM, right? So they could default and then, oh, it's BK, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, Badger, um, we've, we've, we've seen it kind of rise a couple of times and then immediately get down, knocked down. And that's why we're almost sour towards the board, because we almost feel like, why aren't you, why are you almost suppressing with further dilution? But that to me is actually the game plan, because if mm -hmm. there is a white cowboy and a bunch of guys coming in, they need to get it in as cheap as possible while at the same time luring the shorts because it's the shorts through a squeeze that are going to pay off their long-term debt and make this company profitable so to me it's like us if as they can issue shit at the same time we get, yeah, okay. we, we, yeah. We get punished but well that's just it like you have to think of this like yeah you know a squeeze could help them pay off if they can get on top of it and issue shares directly to the market but they won't you know they won't have it but even if they are trying to create a situation where the equity is cheap, why then after the reverse split do we need a billion dollars more, right? Like for the carve out, if that's what's going on, right? Because the whole theory was has been around either an MA or some combination. This could be an MA and a spinoff for all we know, right? Two and one, yeah. who knows, right? So it's like but we have also given seven hundred percent, right? So remember. One billion dollars from here. We got a market cap of is it even a hundred million here? Yes. So you want to yeah, be diluted over. ten more times after seven? That's seventy times dilution. Seventy times. It's I'm it's fucked up that. number, guys. Yeah. Like so, it's I'm saying serious. the equity has been hammered down. This is the opportunity, and it would I believe it would be on Monday. We need to see this, right? But yeah. you are right, ABC. There is this um, this thing here. There's also the the reverse Mor Morris trust thing. Is that actually the same? I'm not sure. Uh, it's n new to me. So, well, the the uh, with the B Riley, if he treats it as a venture capital or an investment fund, he can file a 13F, not disclose, can literally mm, yeah. sell to the street on behalf of a certain buyer, for example, leave them all within the investment fund. Nothing has to be disclosed. No thresholds have to be released or reported. He only has to report quarterly. And okay, then I that understand point, that I was more thinking on the, what is the kitchen soup thing, the red box thing. Was that a reverse Morris trust? Do you know? Um, so it was uh, the same thing. They they created ATMs and diluted the shit out of themselves, went for yeah. a reverse split. And then that's when a company basically acquired, uh, I don't know what the percentage of shares was, but they gained majority control through just buying shares off the street and mm -hmm. literally came in and, and took control of it. But they announced before um and then it took six months for it to get together and their stock literally rose over six months up to a thousand percent yeah yeah so yeah. that's maybe what we're seeing that's a good point. i see the reverse what here I think yes. all the shares uh, we've had yeah. 4.2 billion dollars uh 4.2 billion dollars in the past 21 days be traded back and mm -hmm. forth of yeah. which um 2.4 billion have been just sold so yeah. that means that 2.4 billion shares have been bought in the past 21 days what are these like synthetics or like is it no actual, this is like, street just back and forth like trading that was me sorry <laughs> <laughs> so what i'm saying is we've done the 300 million which i believe is being diluted absolutely we're almost at our 111 million target i hope we hit it so we can pay off that short-term note but i do believe that the 1 billion has also been thrown into the market too over the past 21 days and if that being the case and it's held in a private fund no announcement no no nobody has to come forward and say it's me or reports the sec it's traded like an essence it's like it's like going through a broker right they literally just mm -hmm. keep on selling and selling 
Um, now what I'm supposing, and again, I don't know enough, and this is where I rely on you guys in Discord because you guys really dissect stuff. I'm kind of a big picture guy, is where now you've got this owner with a billion shares, whether it's for the carve out or for the actual takeover of BBBY, I still think they're going to do an 80, 20, 80% control. But um, what if that new owner or that group of people then are going to basically have that spin off and transfer, say, half of them? We're not going to get that dilution, especially if all of that's done within a blackout period, because it won't be until the 24th that, you know, people can start trading shares again internally inside and stuff. So I'm thinking that we won't even see that dilution because it will be part of a spinoff too, where the new owner is going to want part of the, the, the spinoff company and, and do a one for one type of thing. So we won't even see that billion of shares come into effect for us. Right. You do have to take that into account though. You know, the money, there's no such thing as a free lunch. The money comes no, no. from somewhere. So no matter if it's coming out of the core or getting put into a spinoff, that spinoff will get carved out of the core's equity value. Mm -hmm. you, you can't make something from nothing here. So your equity core value would take a hit. You know, it, no matter how you cut this, yeah, it's a lot of fucking shares, like a lot unheard of amounts of shares we're talking you know 20 more on top of you know a 5x we've already seen i don't think the board needs that much and i well, certainly what, don't what, think it needs that for a deal what what if it's a backup because they know that the stock could be so fucking volatile and so much volume and it can run so fucking high that it would make sense to have all that to just fucking sell into the market you know if the stock rises fucking let's say a thousand dollars a share Good Lord Almighty, you know, well, would that table, not make sense to dilute that much? No, I get it. But like, why right. don't you just table 100 million shares on an ATM and wait? Because it says up to, I guess, you know, because it's it's at their discretion, right? If it fucking is tomorrow or if it's over like a, a, a six months. I mean, look at look at GameStop. How how long was the how long did the squeeze last on GameStop? Uh, it was like a. Uh, uh 24 or 30 days like it was a long fucking time like yeah but i mean we had this go. opportunity in august we had this opportunity through the fall we had this opportunity in february mm -hmm. you know and we didn't capitalize on it so like just looking at our track record like i you know we have a pretty shitty track record of being able to raise on the top we're raising on right, the bottom. But it, it seems like they did it intentionally, you know? Don't let the stock run. Don't let the stock run. If the stock runs, we can't afford it to run. File this. File that. Because, you know, if the stock fucking goes parabolic... It's 30, too expensive 40, for the good yeah, guys to how, get in. How the fuck are the good guys going to do the spin-off? How are they going to do what they're doing? So, to me, too many things don't make sense. Again, it's fucking tinfoil, but it's not tinfoil when the 10Q... That was delayed got gets filed during market hours last five ten minutes stock goes straight fucking down the gutter and then all of a sudden larry chang is coming back on twitter after like a seven fucking eight month hiatus yeah it's tinfoil but still it's weird it doesn't I mean, make sense you know somebody I mean? made a good comment in the chat they said roach would you be fine with the rs if they reduced their authorized share to one or two hundred million what do you think? um that that's kind of where i'm at so if okay. you reverse split this to like 45 50 million shares I will allow you to maybe double, maybe even triple, Sue, if you suck me off. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> that was one of the conditions I was yeah. set in the, this letter I talked about, because uh, remember, you've been diluted seven times. 100% from here, that means uh, 14 times. Right. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to get parabolic from right. here if you're already in the hole. It, the only thing to me is that if they knew the stock was going to be so fucking violent and so short in actuality, then all the, all the, the dilution they want to do would make sense you i know? mean but you don't plan your business around no i understand a that possible volatility but, but, event, but they right? but they know that knowing rc coming into the into the play knowing when he when he sold on the cycle you know it's like he he has the knowledge of of being able to do this you know this happened with gamestop they were able to raise a shitload of money doing it this way so yes it's not what they intend to do but it's no fault of their own if they have the dilution ready to go stock runs to i don't know multiple hundred dollars got you know if if it happens they have the dilution to to dilute the stock and make profit off of it and it would make sense with a 20 or 2000x dilution 
you know, constant stuff, constant mention of short squeezes and uh, in their filings of this stock may uh, in a short squeeze rise to levels that are no that are no way reflective of what our our stock is valued at. And to me, that tells me, OK, take that information now with this possible 2020 X dilution and, and connect them. And I'm like, OK, it's almost like they're hinting of this thing could get very parabolic. Uh, to very high levels, and we have now the ability to bring the the price straight back down during a squeeze profit. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what the fuck they're they're thinking. I don't know why they would want to continuously dilute the fucking stock into oblivion. That really doesn't make any sense to me. You'd want your stock to be profitable. You'd want shareholders to support the stock and be fucking members, you know, like they like we have a growing membership, um, you know. So in, in my opinion, I don't think you want to go the route of fuck all the shareholders. That's why I think they're kind of playing fucking dumb here. You know, it, it's just, they, they, the whole thing has just, these are super smart fucking people and they're making decisions like they're brand new in, in, in this, in, I don't know, man, corporate, if if, you know, America. So. If they're driving this thing into bankruptcy, mm -hmm. then fucking the shareholders makes a lot of sense because you sure. You wanna, yeah. If you, you want to, like yeah, yeah, you, you want to rinse motherfuckers, yeah, right. right? And it's that's speculation the beauty on of both sides, you know. Yeah, that's the beauty of this play is that it's so 50 50. But if the narrative is give the sense that we are heading towards bankruptcy, um, and I'm not saying bear trap because a bear trap is kind of manipulative. Um, but what I am saying is if you give out the air or the narrative that we are, you know, doing an RS, we, we did a death spiral deal with HBC based on their history. Now we got these two ATM offerings. They're going to dilute the shit out of our own shareholders. Well, what's going to happen is the people that are trying to profit off the short side of the game and doing a legal nature are going to go at it full turn. And then what you do is you work something in the background, whether it be a hostile, whether it be simply just an acquisition where you come in and buy shares off the street and have a holding company like B right, whatever the case may be. Then you've got all this momentum where the announcement, the eye can lift, whoever it is, literally will end up paying you back. And then you can, if there is dilution necessary, because it's, going to be parabolic you can dilute without really killing off the shareholder because think about it sue said shareholder value on every goddamn document she's dropped i can is one of the biggest in the history of mankind in terms of preparing shareholder value now we don't know about i can yet so again that's tinfoil at this point but right. we do know that that filing with the uh the 1 billion atm that thing was not worded like a traditional atm that almost sounded transactional to one party um, and the way they worded that, I, I still don't understand how they can get away with some of this stuff, but they're, they're smart brains. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I don't, I, I, I'm just trying to be speculative in the way I foresee it. I don't believe the board is being bad. I believe the board is living up to the narrative that we're in trouble for sure. Yeah. But I don't well, think, I mean, so. I don't 